जब मैं था तब हरि नाही अब हरि मैं मैं नाही सब अंधियारा मिट गया जब दीपक दिखिया माही कबीरा दीपक दिखिया माही जब मैं था तब हरि नाही अब हरि है मैं नाही सब अंधियारा मिट गया जब दीपक दिखिया माही कबीरा दीपक दिखिया माही when i was then hari god was not now hari is and i am not all the darkness dispel andhyara mit gaya deepak dikhiya mai when i saw or oh, the light within when i experience the truth within all the darkness is dispelled i here refers to the ego the individuality the assumed personality the false self in other self you can say the small self the assumed personality the small self the false personality i is ego and hari is not our hari hari means god but hari is sitting i don't know the is a hari or i i don't know hmm in hari ji so hari refers to the the god or the reality so the the direct message we get is the ego and the self cannot coexist wherever there is the presence of ego if ego precedes if i exists god exists if god is present there is no presence of the ego last week we did analyze the the various expressions of ego one of the important things we learned was ego is nothing but memories of your past in the bhajagovindam adi shankara acharya says dhana jana yavanam ego comes because of dhanam because you have some wealth jana is because you have a a following yavanam because you you have the capacity to contribute capacity to produce you have that arrogance that i can do it so he puts it in a very brief way but there could be other reasons why ego arises dhana jana yavana garvam he says so the, the ego could have many reasons why it arises 
but just to quickly mention what we discussed ego is as we expand the word ego it's nothing but an exaggeration of one's own glorification exaggerated glorification of oneself you feel yourself you are far more superior ego expresses as a doership attitude and an enjoyership attitude a doership attitude is when the accent shifts from the doing to the doer the accent is on the performer than the performance you know if you listen to the great performers in any field of activity when a performer performs he becomes self oblivious this is one of the trait of a great artist in any field of activity it could be music it could be sport it could be anything that you do while that act is being performed the the self or the the performer the thought of the self or the thought of the actor is self oblivious means there is no thought of i in the performance and that's when the performance excels the moment when you are performing the same act and when the thought of the performer when the thought of i am doing comes in instantly it spoils the performance i am reminded of what uh, sunil gavaskar used to say you know he is known as one of the um, who was who scored the maximum number of runs i think one or two people have overtaken him now only or some some other person has overtaken him i don't know who it is maybe it's such a gentle career or no but for many years he he is known to hit the maximum number of international runs or maximum number of centuries <clears throat> and he used to say post interview he never used to know that he was 98 99 so his thoughts were never on the notice board on the scoreboard his thoughts were never to arrogate that century to himself it, it was not on himself so he just kept performing he just kept playing he just kept doing his part and centuries came his way but we have to give the benefit of doubt to him but yet if you don't practice this quality of taking your eye out of the action your action will not excel so if you want to excel in your action the eye has to be taken out on the extreme extreme opposite of that is let's say you have to take to the stage to perform you have an art you have a talent you have an opportunity people get into a, a feverish excitement people can't perform they become they freeze almost they become blank because they become self conscious so self conscious is i to be self oblivious is hari just to put in a language that we may understand when you become self oblivious when you don't think of that i the purity in the work ultimately the very self reveals in you but the moment you become self what's the word i use gayatri ma one is self oblivious other is not observed missed it the problem is i also miss it self conscious the moment you are self conscious means you think too much of yourself the work suffers the moment you are self oblivious self oblivious and you 
you forget yourself you, you disregard yourself it means there is no importance to yourself when the when, when the performer is out the work excels ultimately the truth comes out so the the ego expresses as the doership attitude and the enjoyership attitude as we said it's the i am the doer i am the enjoyer attitude there it's there in all of us sadly and speaking right in the context of it wherever there is ego it creates uh, a friction with the world right not in the context but is what reiterating reminding ourselves it's my ego that creates a friction with the world greater is my ego greater is the friction lesser is my ego greater is the compatibility or harmony you are not passively accepting see when your ego is less how does it create more harmony the thumb rule you can directly measure it and test it every any time you want more the ego greater is the friction lesser is my ego creates greater harmony the same world the same environment where you are is if you nullify the ego there is no friction at all how do you rationalize this when i lessen my ego the very same world doesn't create a friction i want to ask ashish i know she is not seeing but she is there ah hey om kurti hey om kashish so can you repeat the question before you attempt kurti i believe you asked how is it that if you nullify the ego there is no friction at all or lesser ego nullifying the yes. ego is ultimate stage if i mm. lessen my ego there is greater harmony with the world when my ego is prominent there is it creates friction so can you help us understand how does that happen guruji i believe it is because when you have less ego you become more flexible and i'm imagining it kind of like you're walking you're walking down a road and there's all these people passing you and imagine that you have like velcro on you and they also have velcro on you and they also have velcro on them and the velcro is like ego if you both have velcro you like stick together and like rub up against each other and you can't like walk to where you want to go it like distracts you from where you're trying to get it makes you go down side tangents cuz you get stuck to another person and move around so i think it makes it harder for you to move through life cuz you're always encountering problems along the way have you ever heard of this game not played <laughs> maybe you should try this playing this game you no know? very interesting it looks must be very strong velcro then no? yeah metaphorical velcro have you played this game before no i just thought of it to try and understand the concept of like ego causing problems as you go okay so i'm imagining if you if we're tying it to like 
your purpose or your primary objectives. The ego distracts you from those primary objectives, maybe by the friction it causes. See the 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 the, the what we are trying to examine is how does my ego create a friction with with people around me? So it it causes a rupture in them and it destroys one's peace within. So it's a consequence. Mm. But if there is no rupture, it creates an harmony outside and also creates peace within. See, in fact, uh, even in our our whole body, I don't know how many bones we have. It's a joint of bones, our skeleton. And when these two bones, if there is, they start rupturing and there is friction, then it causes a lot of pain. That's when you go in through ex- through surgery and try to repair it because there is a, there's something which lubricates it, something which uh, uh, gels them. Literally, is a gel. You know, gels them. You know? So when there is ego, you don't gel along with anybody. You find reasons and excuses to find faults with others. You would justify the thought of finding fault, and it it, it creates a, it unsettles the environment. And it happens in the most spiritual places, in the most auspicious places. It happens. You know, uh, I don't want to mention where it happened, but I've, I've seen people, you know, they go to this place, so especially this uh, temples or uh, where people come to do some seva, you know, they go there, I think, but I tell you, I don't see a difference whether they're sitting in uh, their corporate offices or whether they come in the evening to a temple to do some seva or some charity or some work there. They're bringing the same ego from there to here. I don't see any difference. And so much of politics and so much of fighting and so much of cribbing and complaining I said, man, you are in the place of God. You are in, the, in that sanctified place and yet you are not able to put aside your ego and say, okay, let me do. Who is more important? Is that person more important or I am? More? Why is that? It's so evident. And what I'm trying to say is it's so evident. It doesn't matter where you are. It really doesn't matter. If you are able to nullify the ego, that's all matters. You know, a bull is a bull. It could be in the marketplace or in the china shop. It will go to destroy things. You leave a bull in a china shop, what will happen? You can't let the bull run berserk. Don't you see across some videos where sometimes the bull in rage it starts running and starts destroying everything. You know, it causes a lot of damage. So what is the the quintessential thing? My ego creates friction. Setuji, what is that quintessential aspect which helps me uh, clarify this element? Man with ego, uh, you can see in his uh, body language and in expression. He is a bosses around and uh, he puts off people around him. And uh, when things don't go the way he wants, he gets uh, angry. And uh, so, whereas the man with uh, no ego, he will be uh, compassionate, he will be uh, at peace and uh, people would like to. He is very easily accessible and uh, there is a lot of contrast between these two. And uh, this is uh, very evident. We can see in our uh, day-to-day life, uh, uh, everywhere where we interact. Uh, if, uh, and uh, even in uh, us, it does crop up now and then. And... 
yeah so the what causes friction is uh, i am the do your attitude uh, i am the uh, when it interacts with the world it causes uh, friction See, one is the doership attitude. When I do something, I claim I am the doer. For example, as I am taking the satsang, I can claim I am the performer. Okay, that's one aspect. But we are saying the my ego creates a rupture and friction around. Uh, yeah, because uh, as I said that, that uh, arrogance uh, gets expressed and it uh, creates a very bad negative uh, environment all around us because we start uh, uh, bossing and uh, claiming whatever is happening is because of me and uh, this we can see even in uh, officers in wherever uh, 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 not a role model leader moves around we can uh, see sir i have never worked in offices all my life i've been in ashrams and i see it is rampant here also see they they don't tolerate others they speak at the top of the voice they don't listen to others they just uh, go on expressing uh, even when the other person uh, uh, trying to express uh, he concludes and uh, gives a sermon so it's just you are projecting your own personality onto the world and the world has to dance to your tunes it's and almost world, uh, doesn't cooperate with you even little you you get the friction there's a friction so the friction arises is because you are projecting your personality onto the world It means you are expecting your views your systems your standards which you may be right but when you are with the world when you project those systems onto the world the world may not think in line this uh, gets highlighted in parenting also it happens how does it happen in parenting sir see the uh, the parent don't want to understand the children don't want to listen to their point of view they want to uh, impose their views right certainly certainly thank you sitoji the the quintessential point i think we have to get from this is the ego causes friction is you are expecting the world to align to your thoughts and frequency and when the world doesn't align there's a friction but when your ego is less you are able to adapt to the situation and circumstances around you and that gives you a capacity to accept gracefully accept what they are to that extent there is no to that extent there is no unhappiness within you and also you don't unsettle another person an egoistic person goes about bulldozing others unsettling others bossing others and that causes friction now how can i unsettle you i have to respect you for who you are and let you be and if i am a leader i'm still far from it but as i want to be a true leader i should strive to be approachable a leader is approachable respect even criticism to be able to receive it i know i'm far from it but at least we, if we keep reminding ourselves more often than not some buddhi will come into us some sense may dawn on us and say man why are you behaving like that and nobody has to come and tell you something within you will tell you yeah why are you behaving like a rakshasa you know 
rajasic quality rajas is a demoniac quality egoism is a demoniac quality remember that yes harish hari om guruji um guruji in this context i've uh, seen and experienced relationships when there is friction and disagreements and the one party will tell the other person i demand an apology you owe me an apology is that also a form of ego guruji personification of ego you have i have no right to demand anything from the world the world is not your slave and you are not its boss how can i demand respect from you harish can i demand respect from you no or do i command respect command so how can i demand an apology from anybody it is to as i said personification of ego that you are considering yourself so godly that is like mother kali crushing the demon under its feet you know otherwise you will be crushed you will be punished for what you are doing that kind of an attitude you can't can assume yourself to be so uh in human is that extreme because the okay. recipient who was in the friction feels that they have been wronged and they have been there's they have been given an injustice hence they feel they have the right to demand or ask for an apology from the recipient i get I've what come i across deserve this. Okay. i get what i deserve you are a mere instrument for that why should i do that See, we should, yesterday I made this statement in the class, and I'm making this again. You should never become a custodian of others' conscience. You don't sit in judgment. What others are doing is right or wrong. One should not. If something has happened, is because you deserve it, man. Accept it, no? Why are you blaming the world? yesterday some redigar i don't think he is here he was sharing uh, an instance <clears throat> of an ias officer gaitrima was there uh, of an ias officer uh, who used to take his walk uh, his dog along with his wife so this three the, the couple and the dog used to go for a walk and they used to go into a Uh, a stadium you know with a security guard whatever security and he used to go and apparently the the stadium was being used for some training by athletes for a an international tournament which is upcoming somewhere and this they were practicing and they used to practice late into the evening 8:39 they used to play a uh, train there and they were instructed apparently to vacate the stadium by 7 pm i think this was all in the media i don't know where it was but it was in the media i didn't hear it and this guy used his influence and power and made sure that the training stops by 7 so that this ias officer along with his dog can go for a walk in the stadium all by himself and this kept happening and somehow this was captured in the media and it came into light the government immediately sent husband to one side of the country the wife to other side of the country transferred they were meted out to what they had dished out look at their uh, talk of it redigaru is coming redigaru sir please you must share this sir as i told you i am short of examples and things so i'm just referring to what you said yesterday sir the pranam guru ji please continue guru ji i, I just no, no. that no it's better to hear from the horse's mouth sir 
uh, I think it's most of the viewers might have been uh, observed. Like uh, we were sharing the thought of the people's are against the peak is in a, a clear example of this particular incident, which has happened about three days back in a Delhi stadium, where the most of these uh, sports personnel were uh, preparing for the, one of the international sports events. They would like to get uh, trained to the maximum amount of hours uh, late in the evening. So they have an, a coach set in a timeline that you should get trained up to 8.39 in the night. But unfortunately, uh, they have a big hindrance has come, saying that you need to pack your bags of uh, training by 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, you will not be allowed to be on that. So this is there are some VIP visitors are expected to the stadium. So they were on repression that it's a matter of one, two days, but it was continued more than one month about this practice of not allowing them to be uh, practice beyond seven o'clock. I think someone has got into the queue of what would be the root cause for this particular uh, postponing of the timings. Then they come to know that uh, the real reason that there are the IS couple who wants to come to the uh, walk along with the dog to the stadium. So they expect that no, uh, visitors, no person should be there in the stadium. So they have instructions that uh, all of them should pack seven o'clock. So these so-called VIPs can walk in uh, grandly with a dog, uh, with a royal uh, walking across the uh, stadium. I think this incident has really pushed even to the sports minister to the top officials across the India and as well as citizens. I said, there's a limit for this uh, I don't know what word exactly you've been called as an arrogance or uh, attitude of uh, misbehaving. But the good part is that, okay, there are people who does this sort of a misuse and misusing the power. But good part is that the government quickly got into the action to, uh, saying that, yes, this is enough, this is enough. So wife has been transferred to Arunachal Pradesh and the husband has been transferred to the Ladakh. I said, let's you have the dog walks individually <laughs> the way you want. Uh, whichever the part of it. So that would be the conclusion. But I'm sure the well uh, sportsmen lost their valid time in getting uh, trained. As it is in India, we have very poor infrastructure for the sports people. I think there's no, hardly the fraction of the GDP we spend money on to this uh, on health and uh, sports. Of course, sports is the least in the last parity. But to whoever have come to the international arena of the sports person, all of them on their own and self, but unfortunately, the little uh, infrastructure, what we have also been handled and uh, controlled and guided by this so-called uh, people's uh, use. Abuse, abuse. That's, yeah. that's good. Come on, Jay. Thank you, Jay. So, there you go. The world has to dance to my tunes. So you go. Hmm. Raghugaru is asking, should I not demand respect and be treated well by others? I think I just did uh, clarify, Radhigaru. How can you demand anything in life? If you demand it, then you, it's not, you're not, uh, it's, you're not ready for it. But once you have paid the price or you reach a certain state, you automatically come on respect. You know, you automatically get things in life. So by demanding you are, you're, you're forcing is unnatural. So let things be natural. Why are you being unnatural? The commanding respect is a natural state and you command because out of your stature, of your growth, of your establishment in into a certain stage or a, or a higher uh, personality. Demand is you have not reached there, but as Harish was saying, you, you demand an apology from other person. If somebody certainly feels wrong about it, they would obviously do so. So why are you demanding it? To that extent, you have an expectation. When you demand, you have an expectation. Yeah, Guruji, uh, I understood uh, very, this example was very uh, easy to understand and actually I uh, think it's a very good example. But my uh, question was, uh, let's say from 100 to, um, let's say 0 or 10%, not going aggressively, but 
if I go back towards my ego and 90 people just say, okay, or whatever it is, my behavior, and one or two people out of 100 may point out some negative things in anyone. Like say, how to take that into consideration? So if 100 people are assessing you, every yeah. assess, every comment that comes your way, you got to assess whether is there any truth in it and examine it and take it on its own merit. If everybody says that you are very ill-organized, you are very uh, egoistic or you are they're pointing out a certain character in you, you may have to stand up and heed. Is it, is it, there must be some truth because everybody more often than not are trying to identify that particular quality in me. So I need to, they, as they say, I can't look at my back. And people are far more objective to me than me being objective to myself. That's, a, that's another point which we have discussed at times. We can't find our own faults because we are not objective to ourselves. The objective means you stand apart and watch. Now, if I watch, I can I watch you and you watch me. I'm objective to you, so I exactly know what's happening within, what's happening to you. But I don't know what's happening within me. So when the world throws its remarks, it's important that I rationalize it and try and see if there is any rational truth in it. That's about all. If somebody, this, is it not possible somebody wrongly un, un, analyzes you? It's possible, isn't it? So it's a false comment. You don't have to be offended, dismiss it. If somebody gives a right comment, gracefully accept it. Just because somebody accuses you of something, you don't have to, there's no necessity to be affected by it to a large extent if one, one rationalizes. So, you know, when people assess you, they, I can put you at a higher pedestal or lower pedestal. They put you at a place where you don't belong. What would you do if somebody gives you a status where you don't belong, sir? Yeah, Guruji, uh, uh, well, most of the time I uh, don't take anybody's uh, opinion or about uh, too seriously. But as you said, uh, if somebody puts me in a high position, if they give me money or something like like a position or a power or something, what exactly? No, I don't. I don't. Is, I don't. Uh, I don't mean in that sense. Position. I mean, so for example, let's say I'm. 20% spiritual developed. Okay. Somebody puts me at a pedestal of 80% spiritual developed. Means they're putting me in a pedestal where I don't belong. Uh, I'm only this much knowledgeable, but they, they, they give you out of their respect and love. They put you at a pedestal far greater than that. Are you carried away with that? Should you be carried away with that? Or should you tell yourself, it is their love they are giving me a certain respect, but I know I have a long way to reach that state where they are imagining I am. Inwardly, I'll tell. I don't have to go and tell them what you are. But you are respected, but you accept what you are, isn't it? Let's say you are at 40%. Yeah, I agree. A fellow who is illiterate, an uneducated fellow, comes into an argument with you and tries to demean your caliber. He questions your... Uh, your spirit, your your personality and character. How will that person know who you are? What is your stature? So he treats you, let's say, at five percent character. He gives you. Does it justify you to be carried away with that also? You are what yeah, you are. It's very hard to not get carried away. This is the point I'm saying. As so long somebody as somebody puts me on a higher stage, I am. Sorry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, 
yeah guruji if somebody puts me in a higher pedestal i am sure i am not going to get carried away because i know myself what i can do and at least i can see honestly what is going on inside i have Correct. ability but if Correct. somebody puts me in the lower pedestal i think there is a some chance for improvement within my own self so it affects me a little bit at least 5 or 10% sir what is common in both so things is you are you are neither in those things somebody puts you at a point beyond where you are below you are you are in neither of the two so i don't see a difference it may be far more challenging though but in either states you are not in those extremities so the point we're making is if you are able to rationalize what comes your way to a large extent you can retain your sanity otherwise you will you will tend to get affected i yeah, agree okay sir thank you but at the same time if somebody were to assess you exactly what you are you say oh this man has a certain perception he can exactly see what i am you silently acknowledge it as well no oh yes thank you sir you seem to know exactly what i'm saying you know okay sir yeah right so why gayatri ma was smiling what why why is smiling gayatri ma how you observed dev guru ji were speaking to ragu yeah i don't know i have got more than So that's why isn't I wear specs, you know? I got four eyes to see. I was just thinking that uh, Harishi keep on praising me, you no? Know, so I should always put down myself. <laughs> <laughs> Harishi. I'm going to be carried away. <laughs> Where is Harishi? Harishi, I wanted. Ah. Are you angry, Ji? Are you upset? So what's going on, sir? Oh. we can't see you sir what is what's happened uh uh no no yeah hari om guru ji yes sir oh. gama was talking something about you so i thought we should hear <coughs> no i always tell her that um, when i try and say hari om guru ji you know hari om gayatri the moment i put g it says guruji my computer or my phone so i told her guruji is saying that you must respect my phone or my computer hmm. yeah i think a few of them want to comment uh, to begin with yes hari ji boliye but the value based uh, firmness cannot be construed as arrogance in the name of uh, i don't have an ego but i keep on uh, to keep uh, a, a, a peaceful atmosphere even though i don't basically uh, i don't agree with that but uh, where i feel it is not correct then i have to be very firm otherwise i will become a doormat of everybody which is not correct so uh, that, that becomes a passively good you know which is not correct so no, we are not certainly saying that when i when i when i feel that this is what is correct then regardless others are agreeing with me or not i have to be firm it is not correct and the right thing has to be done hmm. just See, to maintain a, 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 an atmosphere of calmness and peaceness if i keep on agreeing with what is wrong then somewhere i am failing this is what is happening in uh, in in the in the modern world 
the wars are happening because one part of the one group of the uh, the world they are agreeing to what is being projected as wrong they are not firm yeah i can't be a doormat always and if i am going to be a doormat for others always i would then... say always you should never be a doormat yeah why should you be a doormat no we are not it is this quality should not be construed of should trying I... to create sir creating it should not harmony. be a weakness it should be a strength yeah, no no it is not a weakness creating harmony comes from a from a lot of wisdom with a, a lot of true very true humility a lot of humility a lot of yeah. understanding yeah. yeah that each one has their personality i must first and foremost respect it and then true. try to inspire them to look up to you so that you draw them in a certain direction so it comes from a lot of wisdom strength and understanding very true so it's not uh, you become passive it's of course no question of passivity but i'm glad we you have to be aggressive out. we have to be aggressively good aggressive in the sense is not to no, bulldoze no. them yeah yeah sure it, it is not to boss around it, it no, is no, to, no 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 is to raise correct... a life live a life or raise the bar to such an extent that people yes. can emulate it can yeah. look up true. to you yeah you know? true in that sense okay sir point well noted sir thank you you are right hari ji you know the important aspect is if it is for a larger good you know as you rightly said you know uh, then sir as we say selfishness and egoism are two different terms is the same thing isn't it you know and that's what hari ji also is saying and but if you do something with a larger good if you have to speak the truth for the larger good that is respected because it doesn't come from a ahankar it doesn't come from an egoistic perspective it's not my view that you're talking about it's for the larger good you're doing you know that is respected that is where you command respect isn't it hari ji uh, that's the very important thing it's the is what it is otherwise if then it becomes a Uh, a dictatorship attitude is only i and my that is not the thing you know it's for what you're doing it is important i'm glad you brought that out harish ji yes yes harish guru ji uh, may i revisit my question i have another question on it from my previous question before may i revisit that please 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 yes yeah guru ji uh, when i uh, use we discussed that when somebody demands an apology or say you owe me an apology is a personification of ego um i want to share a specific example of another household that they shared with me and i want to understand in this particular context in that household there is a family with a domestic helper and for some reason the domestic helper back answered the employer the hmm. employer got very offended and very hurt the feelings are very hurt on that context the employer is saying that i demand an apology from my domestic helper because she back answer the employer in this specific context guruji how does one tackle this feeling or emotion because we are we are, we are subjected to so many different criticisms every day of different sorts of course some they all have to be assessed agreed but at what point does the because it's a domestic employer by constant employer one time then she can do it again and again and again at what point does the employer say no this is has to stop uh, on that context the employer is demanding an apology who's right or who's wrong i don't know but how does one work around these parameters on a day to day basis guruji and this is just one specific example i've shared just because she is your your house worker does that give you the authority to demand they are doing a rightful act whatever okay if you don't need them 
pack all of them off and you clean the lavatories, you clean your home, you sweep, you mop, you, you do everything. Don't need them. If you think you are so superior to them, you don't need it. Just pack all of them off. You do yourself. Is that possible? No. So don't you need them? Yes. Why are you looking at from an authoritative or superiority and say, I am superior, you are inferior? I cannot, one should not. But they may not have all the skills and if they have all the skills and know how you will be there and they will be your place. They don't know. They are ignorant. So, if you are wrong, what wrong could happen by just being human and say, I'm sorry. I don't understand. If I have done wrong to you, how can I not say wrong? I'm sorry, Harish. Just because I employ you doesn't mean you are you are at my you know you are my slave. No, please. That's a it's a very authoritative. It's very arrogating attitude. Yes, you can't even you know in a there was a uh, a very wealthy family, very, very wealthy business family. And it was the, there was a marriage in the family. And after the, the ceremony, it is tradition, you know, the, the bride and the groom take blessings of uh, the elderly people, you know. That's a tradition we follow. The father made sure he called the driver into the main mandap, you know, where the, the ceremony happens. Yes. He yes. called for his driver and in front of everybody, he told his son and daughter-in-law to prostrate the driver. Remarkable. This is a this is a contrary contrast to what you're talking. Told the son and the daughter-in-law to prostrate the driver and he did. The driver was serving the family for over 25 years. That is the respect you give to the driver. Now you are talking, I demand an apology from my servant. These are two extremities. You gain that respect. And you give respect and take respect. Forget all that. If I can, I said to see another person as a mere human itself is to go beyond. In fact, as we are extending our uh, collection of Dohas, and one of the Dohas, uh, he says, you can only see God only when you go beyond these barriers of caste, creed, color, community, and things like that. So just because they come from a lower caste or a lower uh, clique or a lower uneducated thing, you think you're superior to them? To see them as a human, oh my God, even to see, in fact, you know, to see the God in them is the ultimate. One step before seeing God in them is to see them as a human being. So if you were to see them as another human being and respect it itself, you are at a very high spiritual level. Now you know where we are. You should know where you are. If you can't treat another person as a human being and respect, I think uh, we are caught up in so many of our mental blockages. You know? So a contrasting example, perhaps you can share with that family on a lighter note is of this family, how they, in fact, I've often heard from my guru say that it's not how well you treat your guests, it's how well you treat your servants that talks of your true character of a person. How well you treat your servants, not how well you treat your guests. You can, you can lay red carpet for your guests because they are so-and-so and this and that. But how well you treat your servants? That doesn't mean you must make them sit next to you 
on the dining table and uh, that doesn't mean uh, you let them sit on the couch that doesn't mean you give them the same uh, uh, treatment it's that doesn't mean you treat them wrongly but you give them the same respect you know, give them a dignified respect you know is how you treat them how you how you uh, you thank them for what they are doing and at the same time you're not uh, they're not doing any uh, favor to you no you're doing any favor it's a, it's a mutual respect you got to have that and just because they're doing that they are not inferior and just because you are hiring them you are not superior that must get into the head first in fact is other way around i can't do without them one week your maids don't come to your house your normalcy is lost one week let them all ban you think because you throw few pittance at them they are your servants your slaves to you one week they don't come and mop and clean your house and take care of the garbage and the municipality doesn't come pick up the garbage from the city we all have to we all have to migrate our cities to a different place because we living becomes unlivable imagine cities being piled up with garbage it happened so you know there is a there was a i'm again quoting there was a time when the chief minister of a particular state had gone abroad for some personal health and treatment that 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 the person was not in the in the in the, in the state for 2 3 weeks <coughs> apart from the media capturing nobody knew about it okay and an independent location where there was a strike by the municipality because they had certain demands and they didn't want to clear the streets of garbage people started feeling so uncomfortable so claustrophobic that the sheer stench of garbage piling every point was piling with garbage every street there was garbage scattered people were bitterly complaining what's going on now i ask you is the chief minister of the state more important or the garbage picker more important who is more important harish the garbage pallet you have missed the point nobody is less or more important everybody has their place mm-hmm. the state cannot run without a chief minister the state cannot run without the municipality that doesn't mean the chief minister thinks himself superior or the municipality should think himself inferior your drainage is blocked is choking you can't call the chief minister's office to clean the garbage you have to call the municipality and if that person doesn't come and clean the drainage there will be a a backflow of the drain water into your homes to understand that that every role is dignified and they deserve that respect and it is human to give that right respect for them so they are mutually dependent guruji even if you are not dependent sir you have to have that humaneness to see you are what you are and respect what you are and even if someone extremity somebody does wrong to you you must be able to forgive them rather than demanding an apology ragu garu as you said demanding an apology if you are able to forgive them for what they have done as i keep quoting the christ he said father forgive them they know not what they do so these are the experiences which we could really use as an acid test to check how egoistic am i and how i behave and it goes a long way in in either making or breaking a relationship a long way i know what you would say guruji can i ask another question please i think it's quite i'm quite uh, clear this time guruji <laughs> okay no just going by your expression i thought you had some other clarification uh okay a slight minor one <laughs> okay <laughs> but in the event of uh, in this case burgi it's okay to 
of course, not to demand anything, but it's okay to communicate and say there's a better way to do it or there's a nicer way to communicate. We can always communicate in an open dialogue without the demands, obviously, Guruji. That was my I, next... Uh, I think the Russian and the Ukrainian prime ministers and presidents should sit and meet and discuss this. No, the world is going through a turmoil because you don't want to sit and talk. Yes. Can you imagine the same little ego is going about bulldozing and destroying the whole world, not bothered? I don't know. Sadly. Okay, Rish? Thank you, Guruji. Very clear. Thank you. So the example to tell is the bride and the groom prostrated the driver yes. in front of everybody, not somewhere in the, in, the, in the parking lot. In front of everybody, you sought the blessings of your driver. That is spirituality. If I were, I were you, I would consider that as spirituality. Remarkable. Amazing, uh, amazing gesture. Amazing, yes. isn't it? Remarkable. Very, very remarkable. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, Sethuji. Hello. Are you on Guruji? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you able to hear me, Guruji? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, this. Uh, I wanted to some, share something uh, similar. Uh, this uh, There is an Annapurna chain of hotels in Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. It is owned by a very simpleton who, who was a cook, small-time cook, became the owner of the hotel. And he wanted to set up a huge uh, uh, central kitchen in Chennai with the hundreds of uh, takeaways all over the city. So for that, he visited an international uh, expo exhibition in Delhi, uh, uh, kitchen exhibition, kitchen equipment. And he visited a very number one stall, a Swiss company. This man wears the traditional dress, just a simple uh, shirt and a dhoti. And he has a clerk beside him who carries a small bag. And uh, very, they, they look like villagers in uh, uh, normal. So when he visited and met the chief sales manager over his uh, handling and he wanted a big line. That man didn't even uh, give any, uh, you know, attention to him. Then he even very sarcastically asked, uh, do you intend to buy? He said, yes, I intend to buy. Then he said, can you give me a check, advance check? And he discussed and he gave him a check. And he, that man didn't believe this check is valid. He rang up the bank. Bank said uh, his check is much uh, uh, superior to our DD. <laughs> so this is what he said. And when this man went to uh, Switzerland to close the deal, in the same dress he went, and he was received by the MD of the company. And he was surprised. And when he entered in the hall, his copy of the check has been kept in a big uh, case with a that we should not judge people by their dress. Looks. Yeah. By their looks. Uh, oh, which hotel is this? Next time? Annapurna. Uh, no, no. I, uh, because the moment you said uh, Raghugaru endorsed that the food is very good. So, Raghugaru, when you come next to India, please don't forget telling us I am also, I'm ready to come along with you. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Koyambatur is famous. This so I think we, Hariji, I think we must plan a trip to Coimbatore, sir. Now. I think we can go to Coimbatore. Yeah. Hariji, actually, we don't even need to go that far. Oh, just is it? Outside, just outside Chennai, on the highway, is this big kitchen which uh, Setuji is talking of, of Annapurna Group. And very often, when I, in the old days, when I used to travel and work, you know, that used to be the pit stop. So, I, no, and it's per, permanent pit stop. Yes, Guruji, very hygienic, fantastic food, self service. And you know, it was like it, 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 those were, I'm talking of long, long ago when that level of 
cleanliness and you know stainless steel everywhere now it's become a little more common but those never known and um, you know the entire assembly line operation so i can understand what setu ji is saying right right now apart from the the success of the food uh, it's a very interesting story setu ji thanks for sharing that you know very true very true yeah reddy garu guruji i just would like to touch upon this uh, opinions uh, staying away with the opinions uh, for time permits yeah. i just would like to mention that please guruji. please yeah it's yeah. it's like i think there's a one of the chronic challenge each one of us i can say we are going through in our lifestyle like uh, you get a good phrase uh, the pendulum of the clock swings to the extreme right as suddenly somebody could say you you going to the other swing more there this happens all through the day and when we talking about opinion i to my experience to my understanding even i when in the in the organization we got it done 360 degree uh, feedback review from the one of the international organizations who defines what are you what is your soft skills what is your hard skills which covers almost all, all our uh, our own language we call vasanas and swadharmas as a as a human being more scientific manner they map you and they give you so that uh, you can identify the poten- potentiality strengths and weakness of each individual so that they can best utilize leverage their strengths for the organization purpose that was the intention behind this 360 degree feedback i could see that uh, my assessment sometimes so went well sometimes so bad like the persons who are working with the company 15 20 years where i've been opinion that this gentleman is x y z areas of weaknesses the feedbacks have come excellently good so i need to change my perception even though i say along with him for 15 20 years i could not able to recognize what strengths some of the areas where they mentioned is absolutely uh, against of uh, my views means we are judging the people's opinion and expressing with our own opinions with our own thoughts so even 20 years of my association i could not able to evict what is his strengths and weaknesses how mm-hmm. we can think of getting swayed by somebody's feedbacks of course feedbacks are uh, important for the life uh, because that should be very objective as you mentioned there and it should be rationalized when the feedbacks lands on your table how far this feedback is making sense not to get carried away with a more of emotional uh, i mm. i could see mm. the people getting uh, getting swayed like i always consider that we should have an a watch without any pendulum Mm. so what i mean to say that the watch so you are you're not spinning away you are mm-hmm. able to watch constantly what's right what wrong and and in the end your self realization best of utilization of your intellect makes some sort of a, a sense and the a control on your uh, approaches and attitudes otherwise i seen the best of the best people messed up their lives with this mm. sort of a opinions and in the arguments because who i am to give an opinion about you which i'm just like and dislike on some of the uh, areas of uh, interest it doesn't doesn't mean that and i come across very rare to rare people who very can study you thoroughly and tell you you are your swadharma your vasanas and i said that's there is a lifetime everybody not able to spend their own time of understanding their own vasanas while the both uh, trying to find figure it out some other part i think this is the one area where we also should touch upon in our next uh, things uh, how, how is that we can able to balance the life not get uh, swayed away with this sort of a opinions the life goes starts in the morning okay. so maybe we can we can give everyone all of our, all of us a question how not to be swayed by opinions of others would that be uh, right way of phrasing it sir yes that that's to be great you know how not to be swayed by opinions of others maybe we could we could begin next week's uh, satsang with this question how not to be ob- swayed by the opinions of others and and i, and I agree with you you know uh, if you are not grounded you are constantly swaying like a pendulum you know uh, good observation we should bring out a clock without a pendulum sir <laughs> 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 wonderful wonderful right thank you thank you in fact uh, before we leave harish i want to share another story of a very successful businessman 
he had uh, a very uh, close butler sir servant butler who used to take care of him at home and he had a very unique way of he was very devoted to his boss he has been with him for a long time but he had a mind of his own a friend who was very very close to the family often used to tell this person i said man why is it you seem to keep having him as your personal butler you can always put him off somewhere if you really want to have him put him somewhere off out of your sight you don't have to deal with him every day the reason was here is a fellow a personal butler who looks into his personal needs day in and day out at home he never follows what the boss tells him if he tells him to make chapati he'll make dosa if he tell him to make uh bring this juice he'll bring other juice something if he tell something he'll do things of his own he said he this a fellow never listens to you what you say you know i'm just maybe exaggerating you know he says, never listens to you hardly listens to you why are you still having him he said wherever i go uh, every employee of mine he was a big industrialist everybody obeys sits and stands and salutes wherever i go whatever i do he is the only fellow who doesn't obey me and he is the only fellow who keeps my ego in check therefore i am paying him and i keep giving increment so that he doesn't leave the job because he doesn't follow what i say and that keeps my ego in check and therefore i have chosen him as my personal butler can you imagine that how long can you deal with a person who doesn't agree with you at all all the time most of the time you say one thing he'll do another thing uh, look at the thought of that person i am appointed him because this fellow keeps my ego in check so these two examples perhaps you can narrate to that family you know if everybody says yes sir no sir thank you sir no no my ego is shooting up you know if somebody says i don't agree with you thank you why is it so you don't agree with me you can say that but i thought that was a very it just came as a flash should that be told publicly hari ji even though you say no i think i have to say that if i say that i'll be in trouble I think you only say that, Harishji. Vanda, wa? No, no, solungo, solungo, solungo. Please unmute yourselves. I was just saying, many grahastas or all grahastas also exhibit the same boldness and courage that uh, that uh, very rich businessman had. of accepting the opposite but this case this is uh, enslaved for life sir correct yes this is enslaved for life there he could have obviously sacked him but here not possible you know you know <laughs> what they say they say talarate no is all written somewhere you know are they accept on it carry on sir all the <laughs> right hari ji yes sir we shall conclude with your comments i where i was working uh, in oman in muscat the company chairman the way he used to treat and greet every day the tea boy it was exactly how he used to treat or greet uh, directors like me there was absolutely no difference at all he used to take care of and every time he used to ask how is their family because he was staying there alone and uh, his family and whenever he used to go on vacation he used to call him specially and ask him whether everything at home is okay whether his wife is children everything and he used to ensure 
that he goes safely and uh, give him extra uh, perks just so that when he goes to his house, if, they, if he sees that the, the, the house is leaking, then he will say, okay, you go and repair the house. So he has not seen him seen their house at all. And uh, you can never find a difference between the style of his greeting that tea boy, that every day, whenever he brings tea to him. I learned a lot of Vedanta from my boss. Sir, Vedanta is there more beyond this class than in the class, sir. Yeah. Vedanta has to be practiced more outside this class than in the class. And he is an Arab. How does it matter? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm it, telling you, that is... Uh, not at, It doesn't matter at all. Please don't even mention it. It doesn't matter at all. How does it matter whether you're a Muslim or Arab or a Sikh or a Hindu? Is this Sanatana Dharma? These yeah. principles are relevant to people from all walks of life. And the fact that you had a leader like that, you are able to remember and salute that quality in him, emulate it. And perhaps we all can learn that how I should be a leader. And we said how you treat your servants, not how you treat your directors and your, your investors. Hmm? He very, was, pertinent, very pertinent. He, he, he is the best boss I ever had in my life. I have worked in different uh, MNCs and all. Nobody was so great as, I mean, so I, I personally would find no other boss who was better than him. May his tribe increase. Right, sir. Thank you. We'll come back, sir. We'll come back to it. Okay. Oh. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamodachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om